Good morning, boys and girls. Today is Thursday, which means we have one day left until Friday. So we're going to continue working in our iReady instruction book. We are on pages 16 and 17 of that colorful book, uh, our colorful iReady book. Please make sure you are following along in your textbook because you're going to have to take a picture of these and send them to me when you're done. So the example at the top here says, there are eight rows of tables in the cafeteria. Each row has five tables. Maria knows that five times eight is 40. How can she use this to figure out how many tables there are? So let's look at how you could show your work using arrays. And what I wanna do is I wanna point out what this lady right here is saying. She says, the first array shows five times eight. So I'm gonna write five times eight right here. I hope you do too. The second array looks just the same, but it's been turned on its side. So this one is actually showing us eight times five. Now remember, when we're looking at arrays, this that first number, we see blank times blank. Okay, so I see how many rows is our first factor. And this is the, that second factor is how many or number in each row. And I'm writing this down. You don't have to because, as you can see, I've taken up two whole pages uh, in your textbook to write that. Uh, you can write it much smaller, kind of just right here underneath. That would be ideal. So the solution we found was that we could multiply numbers in any order. So if Maria knows that 5 times 8 is 40, then she knows that 8 times 5 is 40. Remember, we call this the commutative property where we can flip-flop our factors. Look, if we switch them, 8 and 5, that turns into 5 and 8. And if you switch those, those turn into 8 and 5. So there's going to be 40 tables in the cafeteria. So let's look at this pair share. It says if two arrays have the same total, how do they show two different multiplication facts? Well, think about what we said with our rows and our numbers in each row. These have the same factors, but they're in different, but the arrays are different. What that means is that we have five rows of eight in one array and eight rows of, we have five rows of eight in here and we have eight rows of five here because you could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight in this one and we have eight in the next one and we have eight going all the way down. And in this one, we have one, two, three, four, five. And there's five in all of those rows. And if you count, we have eight rows of five. In this one, we have five rows of eight. That's the difference. All right, friends, let's look at number 21. There are two classes of third graders. That's funny. I have two classes of third graders. One is a Rockford class. One is a Prospect class. In each class, there are three rows of desks with seven desks in each row. Write a multiplication expression to find the number of desks in both classes. Show how to group the factors in to find the product, then write the answers. So friends, I'm going to give you a clue here. This question is actually going to have three factors. We have two classes. In each class, there are three rows of seven. So we are going to have to multiply two times three times seven to find out our answer. And so here's our multiplication expression. And now remember when we are showing how to group things, groups are when we use parentheses. So I am going to group my three and my seven. So now I have two times, and I happen to know that I know it because I was in third grade a long time ago. You may not know it because this is your first time in third grade. Three times seven is 21. So now I have two times 21. And remember, we learned this in our uh, live lesson yesterday. When we are doing two times a number, all we have to do is do 
21 plus 21 to find our answer. So here in the ones place, I have one plus one is two, two plus two is four. So I know that two times 21 is 42, and the question was asking how many desks, so we need to write 42 desks. Now, I'm not going to take off right now because it's the beginning of the school year. But as we continue, you need to make sure you are labeling your numbers. Because what if you just wrote 42? I wouldn't know 42 what? 42 heads of lettuce? 42 monkeys? I don't know. And I don't know if you know unless you put your label there. So make sure that we have 42 desks. Now we're on page 17. See, we're going through this pretty quickly, aren't we? AJ needs to solve 3 times 8 times 2. Show one way to find the answer. Use parentheses to show how you grouped the numbers. So, again, we're going to do th 3 times 8 times 2. And you're going to use parentheses to show how you group the numbers. So I might do three times eight first. And I know that three times eight is 24 times two. And so you, what you're gonna do now is underneath where I you know, wrote all this stuff and I told you I, I shouldn't have. Uh, you're gonna do 24 times two, find the answer and make sure you label Actually, you don't have to label this one because AJ is just solving this. So just find your answer. This guy over here, though, is giving us another idea. He says, I think it would be easiest if you changed the orders of the factors before you grouped them. So what we actually could do, the way I've just showed you is not wrong, but one other way we could do it, maybe we put the three and the two together. Three times two times eight. And then what you have to do is you just have to multiply three times two first, which is six times eight. And this will actually give you the same answer as the first one we did, but this is just another way to do it. And finally, number 23, Max, not Max, Matt knows Four times six equals 24. What other math fact does this help Matt remember? Circle the letter of the correct answer. So what have we learned about the order of factors and multiplication? She's helping you, giving you a huge hint. If we know that four times six is 24, which of these other, only one of them is correct? Pick the correct answer and then it says Sadie chose A as the correct answer. How did she get that? Well, here's a hint. Sadie was wrong. Sadie did not choose the right answer, so don't change your answer to A just because Ch Sadie chose A. What Sadie did is she switched the order of her factors, but then, so I'm going to write that. Sadie switched the order of the factors, but what did she do? Instead of multiplying, she, she added, and that was not right. She should not have added. So find the correct answer for number 23, and then you're gonna go ahead and get started on your practice and problem solving. That'll be on pages 19 and 20. Uh, in your practice and problem solving book. Remember, your practice and problem solving book is that black, white, and red book. All right, friends, you've done a great job. Thank you for following along and watching my scribbles. I hope this helps you as you work on your practice and problem solving. Bye, friends.